the cloud. All good there. Live transcripts. All good there. Welcome to the uh, Chaos DEI Working Group meeting, uh, October 28th. It's good to see all of you. The minutes should be in the chat. And if you could add yourself, uh, that would be great. And we're doing emoji flags today. So if you want to add a flag of your country, that'd be cool. Um, look at that. It's really short. <laughs> I put the agenda together like, <laughs> like 30 minutes ago, but a couple of these things might take a little bit of, of time. So I just wanted to give you an update on project badging. Um, I thought, did we share that, that workflow last week? Elizabeth, do you remember? We shared it somewhere, but I don't remember if it was this. Okay, let me go grab that really fast. Um, I will. I'll just, I have an image of it. All right. Coming back here. So this is, I just want to, you know, be really open. I put these in the minutes as well. Um, just kind of what we're thinking about with respect to, to badging. Has anybody, have Christy and Anita and Ruth, have you, have you all seen this? Um, for me, it's the first time, actually. Okay, great. Um, so let me kind of explain where we're thinking with respect to project badging. And so again, the motivation behind project badging is to help uh, open source projects think about uh, centering DEI within the work that they do. Uh, and we've been working with the All In project uh, that has done All In for students uh, successfully over the last year. Is that right, Elizabeth? And now they're we're kind of moving to All In for projects. Yeah. Or all in for maintainers, I guess is what it's yeah, called. Yeah, all in for maintainers. Yeah. It's called. So the the premise here, and, and Christy and Anita, if this is your first time seeing this, I would love to just kind of get your initial reactions to this. So um, what we're thinking about right now is is for a project to receive the bronze badge, we would do a test for the DEI.md file, which we have talked about, I think, pretty at length. Um, here, and so this would be an automated test that uh, some folks would put together, uh, and we would check for the presence of the file, as well as really the presence of, of some narrative around the four metrics mentioned there, project burnout, newcomer experience, recognizing contributions, and inclusive leadership. So based on the presence of the DEI.md file and some text, some, you know, legible text associated with each one of those metrics, we would award um, the bronze badge, okay? Period, that's the end of, of the bronze badge. And so one of the things that we would rely on here is that because it's not peer reviewed, that if a community is going to, to actually apply for the badge and go through the effort, um, they have this DEI.md file located uh, somewhere within their organization. But if the community is not feeling like what 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 is said about project burnout or what is said about newcomer experience or so on, um, that there could be a conversation within the community that kind of monitors the responses to those to those metrics. So really, um, we we can't do peer reviews on all of the applications, and I think we'd rely considerably on the community uh, to do that that type of peer review. Although that's not that peer review is not necessarily associated with the awarding of the badge. All right, I'll stop there for a second. Paul, so far, so good? So far, so good. So far, so good. Okay, so at the end of the awarding of the badge, we would provide a, um, a, bronze, a bronze report to the community. So this would be kind of after awarding the badge, we would provide a, a report on say community inclusivity or community accessibility. You can see them kind of here, community accessibility or community welcomingness, whatever they might be. I think this is still to be determined a bit. 
So this report would go back to the applicant. So say, Christy, if you had applied for the bronze badge, we would award the badge to you, but we would say, here's the badge, congratulations. But here's also an inclusivity report uh, regarding the repository or the, the, pro, the project that you submitted. And the inclusivity report um, would just test for a couple, a couple issues around inclusivity. And this would be an automated test and the report would only go back to you, Christy, in this case. Um, we would then provide an update to the badge records, um, so kind of like the event badging, so we can record the um, projects that are receiving at least the bronze badge. We'll stop. Questions at that point? I get it. All right, so far so good. So then is a second stage. If you wanted to apply for a silver badge, you would continue to have your DEI.MD file, which is paying attention to project burnout, newcomer experience, recognizing contributions and inclusive leadership, that recognition still remains. Uh, but you would add a, a fifth row at this point, which is how you are responding to the inclusivity report that you received. It would be up to you as a project whether or not you want to share the details of that report. That's not us, but it's just how you are approaching a report based on, on inclusivity uh, given to your project. And Sean, could you talk a little bit about what might be in that inclusivity report, for example? Sure. Uh, and I started to talk with Elizabeth about this yesterday. And okay. I, I, I want to get back. I just want to have a conversation with Elizabeth because I want to make sure I'm clear on Demetrius's expectations. This could just be an example. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So be, this is so, just an example of what so, could be in the report. So the, the, the examples are I have several machine learning tools within Augur that do um, sentiment analysis, message novelty, um, discourse analysis, which shows the types of speech like question, answer, statement, argument. There are nine categories. And I have a clustering algorithm that will group similar projects together and in terms of their communication and a topic model. So it'll show the topics that, that exist in communication. Further, after talking with Remy de Cosmaker, who's a longtime chaos person, but lightly involved now, there are three government repos that he pointed me toward that look at ableist language um, specifically. Um, that'll be added to that model. So it'll be a combination of those six language models to look at inclusive speech. And um, what I'm going to do is, you know, qualitatively work with Elizabeth and some folks at GitHub and then others in the community to identify projects, even a two or three that we know are inclusive, that we know have been effective at bringing in um, and in, in continuously engaging people of color, black people, especially, um, and and uh, then use that to calibrate some things. I will also include um, because because these language is searching for inclusive language is um, a task that has to be presented in a like not good bad way, but in a here's where you could improve or here's where these here's where your combined model of these six different ways of looking at it places you in the context of an, the full set of repositories um, that we've examined things like things that we know encourage newcomers in general like responsiveness to issues responsiveness to pull requests um, time to close on issues time to close on pull requests uh, and other things so in like, because changing language is uh, more difficult to act on immediately. So I also want to provide um, in these reports things that the, the project owners feel they can act on uh, more immediately. Perfect. So thank you. So, so this report that Sean just described may change to some degree over time, but I think um, like Really good focus <laughs> you're providing, Sean. This is kind of the, the general premise. So that report would go back to the, the applicant. And then as part of the silver badge, I, as the applicant, would really just have to, to document in the DEI.md file how I am responding to that report. Again, I could sh share it. That's up to me. I could share it with my community. I could not share it. Um, but just how I propose to respond. And I think with 
the last point that Sean was making, if there are ways um, that can be improved and we can provide small direction on how that can be improved, that could be included in the response. So, so the silver report takes a look at whether or not, again, those four initial metrics are present. And there is a road that is providing a response to that inclusivity report. Based on that, they get the awarding of the silver badge and we update the badge records to provide the silver and we provide a second report then back to the to the applicant and that second report could as an example be around community community accessibility again the dei.md file would grow by one row so application for the gold badge would include those four initial metrics still include the response to the inclusivity report and now include a response to the accessibility report. We would test for those six things, the presence of those six things, not necessarily the content, but just the presence of some response, and then go on and go, go through that process until we get to the, to the platinum uh, badge stage. Okay, so does this make sense for folks? Yes. Okay, cool. So on top of all of this, and I don't know if these columns over this column here is totally correct with chaos and all in, we can provide resources and education system sessions and outreach to address the reports. And so one of the concerns that we had was obviously scale. So we can't necessarily provide like one-on-one -on -one mentoring for every project that applies for say the silver badge or the gold badge. Um, it's just, we just don't have the people <laughs> to, to do such a thing. Um, and we've, we've known this for a long time, but in, in doing these reports and simply asking for some expression as to how you are addressing the reports, we think like on these dotted lines right here, like in between the badge components, we can provide say education ses sessions that would say something like, so you received the inclusivity report and you're unsure what to do. Attend this education system session system. I keep saying system. Ed, attend this education ses, session grief session. And, and we can kind of talk through ways that you could address your community inclusivity report. Again, we could have another session here that says, hey, you received the community accessibility report come to our session and we can talk about ways that we can um, address community accessibility and so on and so forth. So this will give us at least on these, these dotted lines, a way to kind of consolidate or bring together a, a conversation that doesn't have to be just single, just one-on-one, -on -one, but a conversation that could be shared uh, at, a, at a larger group or community level. Again, does that, so far, so good. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping this would overcome some of the the scale issues that we have. So I'm I'm kind of curious if people have this is kind of the program as it stands right now. Um, Elizabeth, do you have any updates that may shift this a little bit in conversations that you've had recently, or Christy, or Ruth, or Anita? Do you have you know, kind of comments or concerns or areas where you think we need to focus a little bit more that again might move this forward positively. So I'd just open it up for a little bit. Yeah, I don't, <clears throat> I don't have a ton to add to that. Um, the only things, um, Sean, you and I do need to meet. Um, so we'll, get, yeah. we'll figure that out. Um, no. We need to sort out those. Happy birthday yesterday, by the pilots. way. Oh, thank you. Yay. Um, that yeah, was a good day. Uh, we need to figure out the pilot pro, uh, projects that we want to use. And so we're going to work with GitHub to find those. But we just need to, I think, be clearer on our criteria for what we want. I, uh, I think, then... yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I, you know, to be real specific, I think if they can identify any projects that have uh, black Americans who are routinely contributing in some larger than trivial number, um, that that would be that would be useful. It would 
you know, and other projects that have a reputation for being more inclusive. And, you know, Emma may actually be a person that we could ask about that as well. And I, I'm looking for that, not, not necessarily to test the machine learning part, but so that I can actually qualitatively go through everything about those projects. So two to three to 15, whatever it is, and, and try to understand what they're doing that is different than what I see in the larger collection of projects that we look at, um, which can help direct the things that I search for with automation. Okay, that makes sense. And yeah. um, in, in a meeting, and just just for those who don't know, um, I'm also working on the GitHub side um, with that team on a few other things. For instance, the education piece. I um, mean, there's some other pieces that are going with this badging. Um, they also want to do um, some some grant um, funding for projects that help maintainers solve some of these issues on a scale scalable level. So. Um, there's a few other things that are going on in the GitHub side. So that's kind of what I'm like that bridge person. Um, and then to your point, when I uh, met with them, I meet with them every Monday. And when I met with them, Emma was brought up as a contact person to try to get those projects as well. So that that makes total sense then. Yeah, I think um, Emma's, you know, she's been at Firefox or Mozilla and she's been at GitHub. I, I just think she has a view of, she has a wide and deep perspective that not a lot of people have like i think she could send us in the right direction pretty fast yeah for sure <clears throat> um and then just as one one quick other point the the goal in this is to um in, uh, obviously it's kind of like the the event badge like we want people to to progress and not necessarily jump right to the platinum badge so we are going to make them jump through all the hoops to get there and because we want to make sure that they go through that whole process and get those reports and do the do the things that they need to do. So the plat platinum badge is going to be pretty hard to get, but that just makes it more meaningful. Um, any badge that's going to be easy to get, then that's not there's not a whole lot of meaning behind it. So um, we want a little barrier there, a little a little bit of work to be done. So yeah. we're going to be tracking the progression of projects, not necessarily trying to get as many folks initially like on platinum badge like that's not really the goal the goal is the progression mm -hmm. yeah and i i ruth, understand that and and go ahead ruth yeah i was going to ask if we have thought about like the duration for a project to um move from like a bronze to silver like what i mean is we can have a very awesome project that wants to implement everything and just move to silver and move to gold that move to platinum maybe in a month i don't know but do we have like a period of okay um you have applied for a bronze badge um is there a period of time where you can now start um, the application for a silver badge right is there a period or it's just something that as long as you have implemented um things about like we addressed in the bronze badge you can go forward to the next badge So I do have a few comments on this, and I think your the point you raise, Ruth, is a really important one. I think there are a couple time related issues that we probably need to sort out. So one is certainly what you're talking about, which is if they receive a bronze badge, is there a set amount of time that they have to wait before they move on to a silver badge or can apply? Yeah, we have not talked about that. So that's certainly something we should consider. I think there could be another uh, perspective on that, which is if they received a bronze badge, say two years ago, can they still apply for a silver badge or has their window to apply to move forward closed and they need to reapply for a bronze badge, which is, I think is possible. You know, so for example, the, the, the metrics might have changed, the inclusivity report from from Augur might have changed. So we probably want to think about, is it too short or too wide of a window? And then the third thing about timing is with renewals and how we handle a renewal. So if I, should we enable a bronze badge simply to be renewed 
at the bronze badge level again? Or if somebody has received a silver badge, can they just simply renew at the silver badge stage? They would receive, for example, another inclusivity report, you know, and they have to, and then likewise, could they just simply renew at the gold stage or could they just renew at the platinum stage? Or does renewal require moving through everything again? I'm not sure what the answer of that is, so. Have you talked about that at all, Elizabeth? Okay. No, we haven't. Okay. Okay. And Sean, did you have a comment as well? You were in the middle of. But I was just I was just saying that my my thinking is that we will include in addition to like an updated analysis of inclusive language at in between each stage. Uh, additional different metrics that are that are more actionable or more immediately actionable um, so that not only are they getting this language report which again is is just it requires uh you know longer longer frame work to us to address but give them specific other things that that they can work on immediately that are di you know different at each stage um because i think that will that will sort of be encouraging um as opposed to the inclusive language stuff which again I, you know i just think it takes a little while for a project to turn that the large ship of how people communicate yep that's fair uh, did somebody else have a comment i'm sorry somebody else was trying to speak up yeah um so going back to like that um timeline thing mm -hmm. here's the thought i have so say for example for um, when they get that inclusivity report and the things they are supposed to address, right? Um, it's it it can take some time to you can't just do it, do it in a month, right? So we might want to put in like a range. Um, something I'm thinking about is three to six months because we need to see some activity, like you need to describe some activity on how you have implemented, like what we talked about in the report. So maybe a six months timeline or a three to six months, we, we can use that because we need to see like there ha there's proof of, not, not necessarily proof, but like there's something that has been done and it's not just, just you know, one, one um, in, in one yep. month. No, I, I think that's good. Um, it does make me think, oh yeah, Anita, go ahead. Yeah, so um, when I, I I actually think thought of this like the the CNCF project graduation levels, so you apply for the sandbox project, and um, if you're um, within a period of six months, you get issued the project um, level, and then you're given like twelve months duration to now work on your project to graduate to the next one, which is incubation. And within that time frame, you also get like a one year or more duration to improve on the project before you can now move on to the graduation level. So that's how I actually pictured this. Um... Got it. No, that's great. Thank you for that. I do from from Ruth and Anita. I do like I. Um, I'm thinking maybe the. One of the things that we should in, ensure, and this is for Elizabeth, if you're working on some of these education sessions, that we have to ensure that the window is um, long enough that they could participate in a session if they would like. Like I would hate to say to a project, you have three to six months to complete this. And during that six month period, like we have no education sessions. You know what I mean? Yeah some form of support yeah just making sure that the window includes the support mechanisms they need to address the things they need to address yeah and i think the goal is to launch that hub of resources mm -hmm. first before okay. we launch the badging so that should already be, be in place as far as the education sessions themselves go i'm not sure how that that will roll out um, okay if we decide to do that but they will have us this a website where they can go and read and learn and do the things. Okay. So that should be already set up. Okay. I personally, I would 
even if I think if if chaos could do the education set, I I like the idea of kind of a human, almost like a classroom. Even if even if Sean, I mean, you were part of those sessions, like as the producer of the inclusivity report, and mm -hmm. if you're gonna make the claim that these are things that can be addressed. Like just, yeah. it's like a 30 minute session or an hour session. That's like here, propose ways to address these, these particular issues that may or may not have come back as positive or negative in your report. Cause you know, there could be 40 people in the audience. So this would just be for the pilot study. No, no, no. This would be, once this is fully released, the idea is, is that you know, there might be 500 a, projects that apply for the bronze badge. Okay. They, they get the inclusivity report uh, right? and they're so, like, okay, so now what do I do? And we so, would have like an online class uh, education ses session where you're like, okay, uh, hey, you're okay. a recipient of this report. You know, okay. Congratulations on wanting to learn more. Let's talk through how you might address some of the things in that report. At, at first, I thought you were suggesting a 30 minute meeting for each project and I thought you were trying to kill me. But no, now I, no, I no, thought now I understand. No, that makes total sense. It's an hour for each project. <laughs> oh, so yeah, right. Okay, yeah, now I understand. I think that makes I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it could just be a giant Zoom call. I mean, is what it could be. And there, yeah. could, be, there yeah. could be 500 participants on the Zoom call for all. You know what I mean? Yeah, that is exactly what I think it would be. So, yep, that yep. works. Yeah, okay. that's a very good idea. That's a very good idea because, um, yeah, for many, many reasons, that's a I good think idea. It, it humanizes the process as well that that we aren't, it's not just a full like auto scan, you know, from here to here. And then only like resources, it brings the, the human element back into to this. Is something yeah. I think we're missing a little bit and something no. that we certainly have in event badging. We certainly have human, yeah. uh, human element. No, I, 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 we can bring that in would be good. I think I, I completely agree. And I, um, you know, the, the folks that are working on the, uh, this pipeline for the, the report, um, they wouldn't be the people to do this session. And I, I think one of the goals that I have for the report, once we have, um, you know, you know, put together the, you know, basically, um, really the work is to consolidate the results of all these things that exist already. And um, I, I don't want to present them as um, just numbers. I, I want there to be some description and some context, like a range, you know, here are, here, you know, here's a 20,000 other projects and here's where you fit in comparison to them. Um, just how to think about what you just received. Right. And, and, and some, and there's English like language descriptions, um, mm -hmm. behind each piece of data that, that, you know, contextualizes it and makes it, makes it more actionable and more human. Like, you know, nobody feels like they had some machine tell them they're not inclusive. Like, yep. uh, would we just look, it ends up, that ends up being a very bad look so um so my last comment was i i do i don't know elizabeth and sean where folks are at github but i i would kind of recommend going towards the side of a smaller report to start like a version the inclusivity report or the accessibility report whatever they might be mm -hmm. uh, but kind of a, a smaller report kind of like what we did with event badging we had, you know, version one and a version two and a version three, like it kind of grows a little bit over time, just so that we understand that not only we can handle the delivery of the report, um, but the recipients can can handle the, the receipt of the report as well. And we can kind of grow from there. Well, and maybe that's where we take, um, you know, because that because Sean also is going to include those external um, projects as well so maybe we take that giant it's kind of growing like you said matt um so maybe we just take that big inclusivity report and break it up into chunks and those are the different reports totally that could that could yeah. be it as well yep i like that right so this would be like inclusivity report one inclusivity report two and inclusivity. yeah report. yep i like that um and as as this evolves over time in a year or two those reports could shift a little bit um but I like that. 
All right, great. Um, this is the, for the, I just will say on project badging, this is kind of the first time I feel like we're able to talk through a workflow that makes sense in my head and addresses a lot of the concerns we had earlier around project badging. So I'm pretty happy about that. Right. Yeah, no, I, you know, I think your, your continuous questioning really helped drive us to a, to a point like this. And I, I think the place where Demi, uh, or Demetrius, Elizabeth and I need to connect is just to help make sure I have a clear understanding of, of what Demetrius is expecting. And I think, I think I do, like, I don't think I'm far off, but, um, you know, the most, from my perspective, it's super important that Demetrius gets what she wants and is super happy with it. Yep. Ruth, did you have a comment too? Are you good? No, I was just echoing that. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited that we're getting it all together because we've had so really, uh, we've had like a lot of thoughts and they were all scattered at the start and it's all coming together. So. Yeah, sometimes it's nice when you look at something, maybe even just like this, and you're like, oh, it's hard to believe this has taken like a year of <laughs> back and forth to get to something that sometimes looks like it should be intuitive right right from the start. Um, so, okay, well, thank you, everybody. I mean, honestly, this couldn't have happened without all of the conversations that we've had in our audit team, without all of the conversations we've had with GitHub, uh, all the conversations that we've had here in the, the DEI working group meeting. Like, there's no possible way that we would be here without, without everybody <laughs> expressing concerns, <laughs> expressing hopes, and all those kind of things. So thank you to everybody for that. All right, um, I'm going to move on unless anybody has another any other questions or comments about this. All right, great. Um, so the the next thing that I wanted to to talk about, I had this idea. See, like so many only three things, and that one took <laughs> thirty seven minutes. <laughs> so I, I kind of thought that would take a little while. Um, the next one I want to talk about was I had this idea the other day about chaos tour guides about how if if anybody I don't know if this makes any sense but like somebody that is a chaos tour guide and they kind of partner with a person or a group of people and just kind of like keep reaching out to the person like hey I'm joining this meeting today if you want to just join and, and sit in you know we can kind of learn about the risk working group because that's what I do you know what I mean like this is I'm I'm this type of person I'm a I'm a software person like Sean and this is kind of the the the, the meetings that I connect with and the questions that I ask or I'm really interested say for example in project badging and and here are kind of the meetings that I attend to to kind of understand project badging or I'm interested in the newcomer experience and here's here are the meetings that I attend and here are the communication. I, I don't know. I haven't really put together thoughts on this, but just ways that we could help people kind of hang out with us for a week or two weeks or something like that, just to give them a small tour of the chaos project. It may be silly, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's not silly. <laughs> it's actually cool because um, I think something I have been doing lately, I think of, yes, this week is um, popping like on the Chaos Africa channel and say this meeting is happening. If you're interested in this, you can join in. I think I did that for the um, social, the communications working group. And then we did have some people join in. So yeah, I, I think this makes a lot of sense. But the question is, do we have, do uh, will there be like people who are the tour guides and then, people that want to reach out to them how do they connect to them so that's like yeah i don't know <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that i don't know that that level of detail but it's a good question i also think that it's a very cool idea um what i think is that maybe we can try to put together a, a document to have it like more structure on uh what are we going to introduce to the newcomer? How to, you know, like to tell them where are the documentations, things like that. And we can maybe do it like we assign some someone from us to a newcomer 
and let's say like we grab them by their hands and you know virtually and take them to um to places um i i can also help uh, with with a document if if you'd like i can try to put something together so i would never say no to say yeah. <laughs> willing to, <laughs> to put that together so christy if you want to take a first pass at it that would be great yeah sure um and then I, you can i'd be happy to participate in that as well i i don't have any any real like firm ideas or strict ideas at all it was just something that kind of came to me one afternoon and it was just a thought it, particularly as we've been doing so much work around the newcomer experience and helping people along like between office hours this would just be more of a i don't know maybe one-on-one -on -one, maybe a tour guide with, with eight people i don't know so that'd be cool thanks christy welcome so at each team on our team spreadsheet have their own kind of tour guide that it could be the one to kind of recruit or be that face that connect could you put that do you have that sheet handy uh maybe Got it. yes can you put it in the minutes yeah here it is in chat too because if we could just work off that Why won't it paste? How do you paste? What the heck? It's control V. <laughs> Why wouldn't it work? <laughs> it's literally not working. All it's right, I'm going to have to go into the, There we go. Command v. I had to go into it's the command V on a Mac, but I don't know. Yeah, I had to go into the right click menu. Stupid docs. Oh, technology. <laughs> so what, what was your thought here, Elizabeth, that like, like instead of like the contact name maybe just have like that like that would be the tour guide instead of like uh -huh. okay if you want to join this team or learn more about it this is the person so like the person who kind of runs the meeting may not be the same person of course you know yes. what i'm saying yes yeah sure. yep yeah. for sure um do we have could we do like my thought was like higher so tell me how this might fit so like we would have tour guides that are like software development you know what i mean like kind of yeah, these I higher see. level i see so a tour guide so, would maybe be with more than one or like a, yeah, exactly. a tour guide for metrics or yeah exactly i want to develop metrics and i would say hey you know, I'm happy to be a tour guide. I'm not going to hit all of these working groups, but like, let me just show you, let me take you to a few of the working groups where we do make metrics. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and where we talk about metrics and that kind of stuff. And here yeah, are some can, documents that I use regularly. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry. We can ask the newcomers what are the fields that they're more interested in. And based on that, then we can try to direct them to the right person to do the tour guide. And I think that it's it's a good thing that we have that we can also have like a contact name person and maybe uh, any you know like Slack channel, so it would be easier. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that uh, checking first what they'd like to do will help us a lot. And if. If we want to tie it to our welcome Slack bot, we could do that because when you type in newbie and you get the list, we could also add in, okay, you want to do, you want to work on software. Here's a tour guide that can help you figure out where to go. Because now we have a lot of software projects, not just Augur and Gamora Lab, um, but there's other stuff too. So, yeah. And yeah. so, like, um, like from my perspective, if somebody was interested in, my thought is, is, so maybe I have thought about this a little bit, but my thought would be is like, if, honestly, if somebody's interested in project badging, like, so I do, I've been involved in a lot of the project badging, whether it's event badging or just badging in general, whether it's event badging or project badging. So in order to talk about badging, like I, the, the places that I would probably at least have on my mind are, for example, I know there's a, a newcomer badger event like right after this 
you know what I mean? Isn't that true? So like, I would, I would know about that. I would know that there's a badging Slack channel. I would always attend the community call because badging might come up there. I would always make sure to attend this call because badging might come up here. I would, I know that there's, there's a badging call that occurred earlier this morning. Mm -hmm. So I would always make sure to attend that. And at this point, I might recommend attending things around Augur because that might start including badging components you know what i mean so like these are the things if you're interested in badging here are the things that you probably need to and you can come with me <laughs> i'll go to these meetings but i'm happy to attend like with you as a group of people um and so like risk is that what is that from is that from the is that the um, welcome bot yeah but i put it as a footer so now it's on every single page <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know how stuff works. So no, we me. Today. <laughs> someone's gonna have to fix it because I couldn't get it to work. I've, I've lately had trouble like finding the right finger <laughs> arrangement on my keyboard and end up typing gibberish the first time. I don't know what skill I've lost there or what brain function is gone. Thank um, you. Whoever did that. Was that you, Matt? Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It was super complicated. <laughs> Yeah, and one one pretty nice thing I love about like the tour guide is the human interaction component of it because um say for example I'm a newcomer and you send a DM to me like would you love to attend this meeting? I would want to attend because it was like a personal interaction. So it's a really nice idea. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mark. Yeah, I agreed. It's it's meant to and it's I'm trying to think of it in a way too that's like not a lot of work for the tour guide like these are things I'm already doing anyway like I care about badging I already go to these meetings anyway so let me just just hang out with me for the week and you can just see the meetings of, of all the things that I think go together to talk about in my example badging and that's so like if somebody's interested in Augur, like Sean, you are clearly focused on Augur, there are a bunch of meetings that you probably attend that feed into the development of Augur in your mind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I also, because I'm co-chair yeah, co or whatever of chaos, I try to come to more meetings than I have before. No, 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 but it's yeah. not just about all the meetings. Like if, if they were Augur specific things, like these are the thing, these are the meetings that you would attend to pick up information about Augur or things that might plug into the development of Augur. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, absolutely. That's how I know what metrics to develop. That's that's how I. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's how I know what metrics I develop. Yeah, and so maybe like, what are those kind of things like badging, Augur, Rumor Lab? Um, I mean, the meetings that I go to for those reasons. It's I don't really know. I'm trying to think of like, what are the high level high level things that people might care about badging auger i i am I'm, I'm i'm losing i guess i have a i'm not sure i understand the question which i feel stupid about like why why do people come to meetings in general no nope. so so is it we're talking about tour guides right so yeah. let's say that there was a newcomer that wanted to join the chaos project. Right. You know, like, it, of all the things that you do in the chaos project, I'm super interested in the development of metrics. All right. right. That's what I'm interested in. Yeah. Uh, so what, what meetings or resources should I be aware of that kind of are focused around metrics? And so as a tour guide, Sean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You would say, well, from a metrics perspective, I attend the risk working group. Like this is just what you do. Yeah. From a, so, from a metrics. So, so what I so what I what I would suggest to people is that they, they come to a few community meetings and they come to the newcomer meetings that Elizabeth and is it Ruth or I can't remember who hosts those. Um, but, but that that they go to that meeting to, to get a sense of the scope of chaos. I think if they express an interest in, you know, I want a tool to show me metrics, then 
then I think we have a couple of emerging options that we can point them to that are kind of already available online or will be shortly. And I also think that uh, tutorials on like I've I've tried scheduling tutorials on Augur um, and have had limited success. I need to maybe consider different times of day or days of the week. So you don't um, typically like the tour guide idea. Is well, when you say, when, oh, I don't dis, I don't, I don't guess I don't understand the tour guide idea. Like you would assign a mentor to be a tour guide. Yeah, a person, yeah, a person would be a tour guide. So like, again, if I go back to the badging example, so let's yeah. say the newcomer. I'm sorry, Matt, I'm, my brain just didn't rock all that. Yeah, so like, let's say that we're in the badging example, somebody's interested in, we're out, we are out of time. I can explain it to you. I think I, I think I, I, I think I, I am not against the tour guide idea. I, I think it's actually a really good approach to have have someone be a, a mentor or willing to, you know, show someone around and that's answer it. It's just questions. showing somebody around. Uh, for that's like, a, for like that, a week or two. Like that's a, that's a fantastic idea because it really helps to get down to the core thing that they're coming to chaos for. Yeah, uh, like which, I care. I care about Augur. Like, and, just, and, Sean, show me what meeting, like, let me hang out with you for two weeks. Like, yeah, not and, it may, and it may be, you know, and I think part of it is people aren't exactly sure what they're coming for sometimes. So yeah, and it, I think that was Christy's point, like, ask, yeah. like, let's just ask newcomers what might be those those categories. Yeah, and and I think sometimes, like, when I've been on the office hours and newcomers have come in, I, I, I think that, that um, they just need time and someone to show them around as you suggested to to solidify actually what it is they're here for like what we do and where their skills and interests fit mm -hmm. um it's it's not like a it, it's it's like it's like chaos is like ordering off of a chinese menu there's like 400 items and you have to decide which one you want and you're not even sure what you're hungry for <laughs> okay so on that <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everybody um, we didn't get to the next week I do want to kind of go through the the spreadsheet and take a look at I think I just want to continue to review the metrics that we have and make sure that we're all updated mm -hmm. on the, the DEI um, sheet so uh, just a little bit of a, a deep dive on that so awesome conversation thank you everybody thank you for coming and I'm going to stop the recording and 